In looking at the electromagnetic spectrum, we noted that light has an energy and that the energy of a light wave or a packet of light is a discrete multiple of its frequency. So light that at a particular frequency can only have energy in units of a particular chunk and that packet or chunk of energy is referred to as a quantum, a quantum of light. And so in equation form, what we'd say is that the energy of some sample of light is equal to an integer multiple or discrete multiple, that's what this n value is for, of a constant h times the frequency nu. And that constant h essentially relates energy to frequency in a fundamental way. That constant has a value of 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds, and this is known as Planck's constant. It's a fundamental constant to quantum mechanics, and for a sample of light, Planck's constant is sort of a fundamental quantity of energy as a function of frequency. The way we're talking about chunks of energy seems to suggest that light is almost behaving like a particle in this context. It's a little bit of space that's carrying around energy, just kind of like a particle would. And each chunk of particle-like energy, each quantum of light, is referred to as a photon. This is a term that sort of reflects the particle-like nature of light. And here we've arrived at sort of a conundrum, right? Because we talked about the classically wavelength nature of light, but we just talked about the fact that light appears to carry around energy the way a particle would. Light exhibits a phenomenon that's characteristic of all quantum systems, which is wave-particle duality. It behaves like a wave in some ways and a particle in other ways. And in some experiments, it's more wave-like, and in other experiments, it's more particle-like. Keep wave-particle duality in mind. Even systems that we would classically think of as particles can have wave-like properties in a quantum system, the electron being the classic example of this. Let's work a quick practice problem to understand the relations between energy, frequency, and wavelength that we've talked about so far for photons. When we see light from a neon sign, we're observing radiation from excited neon atoms. Some of that radiation has a wavelength of 640 nanometers. Hundreds of nanometers is typical of visible light in terms of wavelength. And the question here is, what is the energy of the photon being emitted? So we want to know what the energy is. Let's call that E. And what we know is the wavelength of the light. Let's call that lambda. Now, we've previously seen that energy is directly proportional to the frequency of light, with the constant of proportionality being Planck's constant, h. There's only one photon here, and so we're going to take out that n value since we're just looking at one photon, n equals 1. The wavelength does not appear in this equation, but to make it appear in this equation, we can recall the relationship between frequency and wavelength using kind of the speed of light as a sort of bridging quantity, right? The speed of light is equal to the product of the wavelength of a light wave and its frequency. And of course, another way to write this is that the frequency is equal to C divided by the wavelength. So now we can head back up to the first equation and substitute in C over lambda for nu to arrive at an expression for the energy. E equals HC divided by lambda. hc is just a constant, and lambda is given in the problem, so now we have enough information to calculate the result. From here, it's just a matter of plug and chug. And the final result is 3.10 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So the energy of a single photon is very, very small. When we start talking about a mole of photons, multiplying this by Avogadro's number, we're back up to more familiar territory, something like joules or kilojoules. But for an individual photon, 10 to the negative 19, 10 to the negative 20 is pretty typical. Let's look at a couple of more examples now that suggest that light has particulate nature. The first was a phenomenon that was first explained by Einstein, and this was really what gave rise to the concept of a photon called the photoelectric effect. The photoelectric effect 
is the ejection of electrons from a metal surface when light above a certain threshold frequency impinges on the metal surface. So in terms of kicking electrons out of the metal, there's this sense that the light is made of particles that collide with the metal atoms and cause the ejection of electrons out of the metal. There's sort of a particulate explanation inherent to this phenomenon. But there are other aspects of the phenomenon that suggested the photon model. For example, the threshold frequency. The threshold frequency can be associated with a threshold energy, which is called the work function of the metal. That threshold energy suggests a relationship between the energy of the electrons, or the energy of the light, and the frequency of the light. It was also found that the kinetic energies of the ejected electrons, the, the kinetic energies of the electrons kicked out of the metal as light impinges on it, are proportional to the frequency. And so there again, that suggests the energy of the light proportional to frequency as kind of a common quantity that's connecting the light and electrons. The energy of the light proportional to its frequency is transferred to the electrons and converted to kinetic energy as they're ejected from the metal. It was also found that the energy of the electrons ejected is not dependent on the intensity of the light. And classical wave theory would have predicted this. The energy of the electrons ejected depends only on the frequency. If we're below that threshold frequency, if, for example, we're in the red, and that's below the threshold frequency of this metal, no electrons will be ejected no matter how intense that red light is. What this suggested to Einstein, which is pretty clear to us now, is that intensity is just a measure of the number of photons hitting the metal surface, not their energy. And if we're below that critical energy value, no electrons will be ejected no matter the number of photons hitting the metal surface. One more phenomenon that suggests that light has particulate nature or particle-like aspects has to do with the light absorbed or emitted by atoms or elements. What we're looking at at the middle of this slide is the spectrum of a series of elements, sodium, hydrogen, calcium, and mercury. And a spectrum is just the wavelength dependence of light emitted or absorbed by the elements. So the x-axis is a wavelength scale, actually in angstroms, which is 0.1 nanometers or 10 to the negative 10 meters is one angstrom. And everywhere where we see a vertical line, there is light absorbed or emitted at that wavelength. What's interesting about the spectra of the elements is that unlike light from, say, an incandescent light bulb, we don't see a rainbow of colors emitted by excited atoms. We only see light emitted at very discrete wavelengths. What this seems to suggest is that the atom can only absorb or emit light in chunks or quanta. There's the phenomenon of a quantum of light again, that when an atom goes up or down in energy, that corresponds to absorption or emission of light, respectively, and it can only do that if the energy of the photon striking the atom matches the energy gap between levels in the atom. We'll have more to say about the energy levels within the atom a little bit after we've talked about the quantum nature of electrons. But for the time being, the point I want to make is that the energy that the photon, the particle photon, is carrying around in the form of H nu is what causes these transitions to take place in a sense. So there's a particulate explanation for the absorption and emission of light by atoms as well.